Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs and today we are continuing on our Wanderlust journey and we are starting with the hybrid version which is a mini album slash traveler's notebook mashup type album. It is a printable template and so far we've got the covers done and we've got the main base layers in there in the book and then we've also got the elastic in there. The papers that we are using are the Floral Whimsy. This is my new digital paper collection that I put out right along with this new template. So we are going to be using this to make this album. Um, all the links to the templates and to the papers will be in the description box below, as well as the playlist for the Wanderlust Floral Whimsy um, mini album will also be in the description box below. So if you are Coming in at the third video, you can start at the beginning and work your way down. So don't forget to check that show more box. Let it drop down and all kinds of useful information is down there. So what we're going to do today is we're going to make a quadruple pocket. Is that correct? There's going to be four pockets. It's going to be less bulk and it's going to be easily, this, the insert is going to be able to easily slide in and out. So I've only done this one other time, um, and that was this morning, and I did it in, uh, in my prototype to see if it would work, because I had the idea, and I thought, you know what, let me try it real quick. <laughs> so I've only done it one other time, so I know it'll work. Let's just see if I can execute it properly. <laughs> so let me move this stuff. So what we're going to need from the template is... Page number three, this is the main base layer too, but we're not going to be using it as a main base layer. Um, and I just printed it onto a regular cheap copy paper, just regular, a really thin cheap copy paper. So you're going to need one of those. And then um, you're going to need two of page number four. So this is the main base layer three. And you're going to need one on white cardstock. I use 110 pound cardstock, but if you've got 65 pound cardstock, that would be fine too. Or whatever you have. You do not have to use 110. That just happens to be my favorite. And I get mine from Staples. Um, that's the best place I can find price wise. So I always get, and I like the way it feels. It's got a really nice feel to it. And it's hard to explain. I'm a little weird about paper, but. Anyway, so you need one of page number four printed onto white cardstock. If you're following along, you know, with me doing, doing the same thing that I'm doing. And then you also need one of page four printed on, this is one of the floral whimsy um, pages, digital pages. It's in the PDF number three. And it's the one with the purple flowers and the script. And then there's some brick back there. Um, so we printed the digital paper first, digital did you, <laughs> I'm having a terrible time talking today. I mean, that's not unusual, but you know what I mean. Um, print the digital paper first, and then I sent it back through my printer, and I printed the plain version of page number four on top of it. So that is all we're going to need for right now. So I'm getting my paper trimmer out. This is a Precision Heavy Duty Paper Trimmer by Fiskers. Fiskars, Fiskars, however you want, however you want to say it. <laughs> um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this bottom piece away because we don't need that, and we don't want to throw that away either because we could use that for something else. And then I'm also going to trim this other pocket away, and I'm going to put that uh, aside as well because we don't need that right now either. So then that's all we're going to do to that right now. So then this one, I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. This bottom part here. Put that in my white scraps. I have different scrap piles. Do you guys do that? Okay, so for this piece, we're going to take this tab off of this main base layer three. So we're just going to go ahead and slice that part off, that long tab, and we're going to put this aside. We don't need that right now and then that's all we're going to do for that and then for this piece we are going to go ahead let me see let me think we are actually going to go inside the line here we're just going to go inside just ever so slightly just a smidge 
and we're gonna cut we're basically cutting that distressed line off we're gonna do that on both sides here um, I don't, you don't have to be this super precise. I don't know why I'm trying to be this super precise. And then we're also going to cut this middle part out the same way. We're going to go on the inside of this line. And then on the inside of this one. There might be an easier way to accomplish what I'm doing, but um, this is just kind of what came to my brain this morning. So that's, that's what we're doing. <laughs> Okay. All right, so now we're gonna need our scoreboard. So I don't need these two paper pieces right now. So this is an EK Tool scoreboard and an EK Tool stylus. And we're gonna go ahead and, you know what we're gonna do first? I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We are going to go ahead and tab our corners. It just makes it easier um, to score if you do it this way. You can line up the lines just a little bit easier. And then we're going to tab all four of these corners. Um, in case you're wondering, I get asked about it a lot. My little garbage bowl here. This is from my small keepsakes, um, my small keepsake mini album printable template. And I just took my box and just didn't put a lid on it and put feet on it, right? So the, the reason I started using one of these is because, did you guys used to watch Rachel Ray? I don't know if she still does it now. But she used to have a garbage bowl, and we do that in our kitchen. Um, so I thought it would be perfect to do it here um, in my studio as well. And it's cute. You know, it catches all those little bits, and it's cute. Another thing I've been asked quite often, and I'm going to go ahead and talk about it now while I'm thinking about it, is what do I have my ink and ink blending tool on? And so all of this, the only thing this is, all of this is, what is this? Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> This is just a plastic case. When you buy like um, a cover for your iPhones or your Androids or whatever, sometimes they call it a glass something or another. I don't know. I can't remember. I used to have the packaging, but I think I threw it away. But let me see. What else do I have over here? So here's the other half of it, actually. So it's like a protector kind of situation for the piece that you're getting ready to put on your phone. So it's two pieces and um, I kept them and I just, that's what I use as a tray so that my top of my ink doesn't, doesn't get, you know, nasty and I don't get ink all over the place. So that's all this is. It's just from recycling. Uh, my son was getting ready to throw it away and I was like, no, I'll take it. So every time I see something like this, I keep it because you never know. I have several of them now because he actually had to buy several of those. So anyway, enough rambling. Moving on. Now I'm going to I'm going to score all, right, all the way around this one. I'm going to try to be accurate here. Score all the way around. And then I'm going to score all the way around this one. And then I will be back. So before I put my scoreboard up, I wanted to also, I get, a, I get another question a lot, so I thought I would address it. I get, I get, I have um, these black lines here on my board, and the only reason they are there is so that I can line my template up, my printed template out, and I can line this, the line, the uh, distressed line with this top part and with this bottom part without worrying about it shifting and going cattywonked and me jumping over to another one without knowing it. This way I know that I am scoring on the line that I want. And 
the reason I don't go ahead and just bump it up to the top is sometimes the edges aren't straight. So these are handmade templates, so not everything is 100% perfect um, in every single, you know, one of the template pages. So some of them might be skewed just a little bit or there might be cut just a little bit on one end or whatever. Or when you cut them out yourself, you might have cut it just at a slight angle. Um, so it's better for me to just go, and that's why I never bump it up on my paper trimmer either because I can line it up better, you know, if I go off of the lines versus bumping it up against the rail. So that's why I do that. Pretty simple. So now I'm going to go through and burnish, or burnish, prep and burnish all of those score marks. Just like that. This is a Teflon bone folder. I'm going to prep this one. Whoa. And I'm going to go ahead and burnish all of these as well. Whoops. That's what happens when you get in a hurry. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put tape on these before I forget because when I went to do the prototype this morning, I kind of um, made it more work on myself than, than need be. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. These are, these are, this is um, clear double-sided, is it double-sided clear tape, strong adhesive? Yeah, I guess it's double-sided adhesive. Yeah, clear double-sided adhesive from <laughs> scrapbook.com <laughs> I'm just having one of those months you know where do you ever stop and go how do you spell that or and it's a word that is normal like that you you use all the time or you it's a word that you say all the time and you're like what is that word what am I thinking of that's the kind of month that I've been having it's been happening a lot I guess I'm just going to attribute it to the fact that my brain is on overtime. It's on speed think mode. Too much going on. So, so I'm going to do both of these pieces. Whoa. And my ring keeps getting caught in this roll of tape. So, I don't know. I don't know if this one is a little bit smaller or if I'm just not paying that much attention. Okay. And these are Tim Holtz mini snips. These are the mini, mini snips. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to go ahead and tack this long side piece to these two short pieces just real quick so I don't forget and then I'm also going to test it to make sure that it fits on my page here I mean it's supposed to right that's what the templates are for they're supposed to already taken the measurement uh, work out for you but sometimes we cut or we score odd so yes it fits perfectly Okay, so now what we want to do is I'm going to actually cut this piece into three sections. Oh, you know what? I don't need the top one. I don't need the top one. Okay, so don't do the top one. <laughs> Go ahead and cut that top tab off. You don't need it. Um, that's going to be one of our pockets. So there you go. I just wasted a piece of tape. So this is going to make the side pocket insert pocket, right? And then this is going to be a top loading insert pocket. And then we're going to have two more and we're going to use the same piece, but they're all going to have their own sleeve. Okay. So, well, not really sleeve. I'll have to show you. Let me get my paper trimmer back out. So, I don't know if I should try to measure this or just go 
with wherever. I think I'm just going to go with wherever. Um, let's see. Let's. I'm going to, I think I'm just going to line up my bottom tab here to number, f to number four. <laughs> see what I'm talking about? I'm making no sense. I'm going to line this tab up to the four inch mark and I'm going to cut. So there's one. And then what do we have left here? About four and a quarter. So then let's make another pocket at about, let's do three. Let's do three inches. No, let's do two and a half. Okay. So there's those three pockets. Okay, so before I go any further, I want to go ahead and make a pull. I want to go ahead and punch a pull. So what I did was I took one of the scraps from cutting, you know, the scrap to be more precise. <laughs> I took the scrap from when I made my prototype and I took a two and a half inch circle punch. You could use whatever you want though. This is, I'm just telling you the process of how I did this so that they're all going to be even. So I took a two and a half inch circle punch and I centered it up and punched it to the depth that I wanted. And um, this piece is cut exactly to the width of the page. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay this on here and I'm going to line it up to the edge um, of, that, of that pocket right there. Try to get it on there straight. And then I'm going to mark it with my pencil. So I even wrote on here that this is a two and a half inch circle punch. Um, and this is for the large wanderlust page so that I know for future reference. And then I'm going to put this in my, in my uh, workbook. So then I'm going to do it to this one and I'm going to do it to the other one. All three pockets get a punch. So you could either get your hoe punch out or you can just cut it freehand, whatever you feel comfortable doing. So since I've got my hole punch out, I'm going to go ahead and use it. So I'm going to get it out and I'm going to line it up and I'm going to punch my little pull. There's one. Now there's another. And the last one. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and ink these up. Um, yeah, so I'm using Distress Oxide in Walnut Stain. And I'm going to ink up all the way around the pocket here. And the top where the pocket's going to start. And the top and bottom of these two pieces as well. I need to rink my pad again, and I need to get a new thingy, a new pad. Okay. And then I'm also going to ink just the edges of this, I think. You know what? I might, I might, just in case you can see inside this pocket, I'm going to ink a little bit so that's not so stark right on the inside there. Um, I don't think you'll see this outside part. Okay. But I think you'll see that a little bit. 
All right, so here's what we're gonna do. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna attach this bottom pocket. Are you guys confused yet, or are you with me? So I'm tacking that bottom tab down to the two sides. And make sure I got this right. So I am just going to go ahead and line this up down here at the bottom and on each side. Hopefully it works well and it's good enough. Oh, did I forget to tab? That's okay. Light's all right. All right, so I got that on there. Then I'm going to burnish that good. So the next step is I'm going to take the second piece, which is going to go right here, right? So I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to take a piece of that paper that we cut down and I'm going to attach it to the inside of this part, this pocket here. So I'm just going to just wait before I do that though. I do want to go ahead and ink this white paper. I thought about printing off the vintage background, but you're not going to see most of it, so I didn't want to be wasteful. So I'm just going to ink that part right there. Then I'm going to take some art glitter glue. And again, my stopper topper, there's a link below to the Etsy shop where you can get that at. So I'm just going to run some glue here, and then I'm going to sit this, I actually could line it up right with that line if I wanted to. I'm going to line that up just like so, right? Okay, so now we got something that looks like that. So I'm going to set this up next to here. Actually, I'm going to lay it up next to here. And I'm kind of just going to get a gauge for where the bottom is. And I'm going to mark it. But then I'm just going to trim it off like, you know, an eighth of an inch above that mark. Just like that. So then this is going to slide in here. Well. Wow. Well, come on. It's, I, I promise it will slide in here. <laughs> come on. See, this is why we're doing this part so that things can slide in and out easily. Oh, it looks like it's just too tight. I might have to, I might have to trim it up. Let me go ahead and do that before it drives me nuts. So I'm gonna trim up just a little bit more. Just a hair. All right, now it should go in super easy. Got to get down there in that. There we go. So then that will go there like that, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and attach this down. We're going to take the backing off of these. I'm going to flip it up. Put those in, and I'm going to try to line this up the best I can. Maybe I should have just done one backing at a time. Okay, just like that. So there's pocket number three, and then the other piece that we have, let me see if it'll fit. I'm going to put it... Okay, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna get the paper trimmer out. So I need a longer piece this time. I'm gonna put it back in the paper trimmer and I'm gonna cut another sliver off. And let me go ahead and, and guesstimate here 
how long this one needs to be. So let's guess right there. Since I got my paper trimmer out, I'm going to go ahead and use it. And watch that be wrong. <laughs> um, I'm going to ink it up. So this way, each pocket has a full pocket. Does that make sense? So that your tags or traveler's notebook inserts or your ephemera, that kind of stuff, will slide in and out easily. And before I attach this, I am going to go ahead and ink this top up a little bit better because that will be showing through the pool. Okay, I need this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my art glitter glue again and I'm gonna run some right along that part there. And then I'm going to lay this down, butt it up against that line there that's conveniently there for me, and attach it down. All right, so now we have that, and now this should slide all the way in. So, let's see, I can tell that this is sticking up further than, oh, not, not much, just barely. All right, so I'm going to take one tab off at a time this time. I'm really going to make sure this is pushed down. All right, let me get this one. Too terrible. Let's see. I'm just going to try them a little bit off. See if it even matters. Probably doesn't. Alright, so now let me ink that edge back up. Okay. So now we have a full pocket here, a full pocket here, and a full pocket here. I don't know why that bothers me seeing that crisp white. Okay. Right? So when you slide things in and out, let me grab this other piece here. So this pocket goes all the way to the bottom, this pocket. It goes all the way to the bottom without interruption and then this pocket goes all the way to the bottom so and it look how thin it is it is super thin so if we would have printed out several different like we could have made two pockets out of one cardstock but then that would be like another three layers um, to have this many pockets on one page so I just thought this was a cute fun way to make a quadruple pocket is what it is. So then this is going to go right here on this very first page. It's just right there. So let me go ahead and get the backing off of here. And then I'm going to turn this to the side and I'm going to line it up. Actually, I'm going to line the bottom one up first. I'm not going to get too close to that score mark. And then I'm going to line it up along the bottom. Perfect. Line it up along the top. Perfect. Perfect. All right, I'm going to give it a good burnish from this side. All right, and then a good burnish from that side. So there it is. There is our new 
one, two, three, four. Pocket page. I just love it. I love the way it turned out. Um, I want to make an insert for each one and a side pocket insert. So I'm thinking uh, we can make one insert, I think, in this video, and then the next video we'll make the other three. So let's make a notebook to go in this first pocket. So let me get some supplies together for that and then I'll be back. Okay, so we're gonna make a little traveler's notebook insert and what I did was <clears throat> in the small version on page nine is the covers for the traveler's notebook insert. So bear with me here. I printed the digital paper just like the one we used on the cover I printed that one off in the landscape version and I printed it off onto 110 pound cardstock and that is in PDF and number two. And then I flipped it over bloop, and printed off number nine in the shades of color. And then I flipped it over once again and then printed page number nine on top of the digital paper. Now, if you don't want to do all of that, that is perfectly fine. I actually have in my workbook, I have a traceable template, and I could have just simply, instead of running it through my printer one more time, I could have just traced it on there, no big deal. But I decided to go ahead <laughs> and run it through my printer one more time because I was there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim this out. I'm gonna leave all three sections attached. So, trim these parts off. Okay, so I already trimmed it out. I scored it and then I inked it on both sides. So this is what we've got. So it's gonna go like this. It's gonna fold up like this. So this is gonna be a pocket and then this is gonna fold over and this is gonna be the cover. So this is going to go in this pocket right here like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it like a little notebook, like a little list book. Um, one of my favorite papers, is this paper and I don't know how to say it Rodea Rodea um, I don't know I don't know how to say it but if you're gonna get this paper you're gonna you you'll love it first of all um, but it comes in several different sizes so you need to be careful so I accidentally ordered um, the smaller size which I'm gonna use today but um, it's the same paper but if I was gonna order it and I have ordered plenty of it trust me <laughs> I would get the larger pad this one is dot pad number 18 dot it's made in france it said but it's this really nice dot grid paper and it feels so good can you see it the dots are very faint but i really enjoy this paper so i'm gonna use that and i'm going to how many pages do i think i need one, two, let's see, four, I don't want to get it too thick, let's see, five, six, seven, eight, let's just do eight. So these are smaller, so this is the dot pad number 16, it's just the same paper, it's just smaller, and since this is such a small little notebook, um, I'm going to use the smaller paper. I love this paper. It's great for practicing your calligraphy or your brush lettering, all of that stuff. It, um, like if you use like Tombow markers and you write something and you can use your brush, water brush to kind of like move the color around. I don't know. It's just, I just love this paper. All right. So I'm just simply going to fold it in half. I think there might be too much. And then I'm going to gauge on the height. I'm going to have to cut both the height and the width. Um, so I'm just going to draw a line for the height. And then the width is going to be a little bit harder to do. So. We're 
we're going to make the simplest notebook ever. And if it's not quite exact, that will be all right. So then I'm going to draw a line here. All right. So I'm going to get my paper trimmer out. I guess I could. Um, yeah, let me get my ScorePal cutting mat and my craft knife and ruler, and let's do it that way. So, okay, maybe it's not the easiest notebook ever because you have to get some fancy tools out. All right, so I'm going to take my ruler, and this is a Tim Holtz ruler, and I'm going to go right inside that line. And then this is a Scotch utility knife, I think is what it's called. I think I got it straight. I can't see. The lights are glaring. And then I'm just going to make several slow passes to neaten this edge up. Like that. And I'm going to turn this away. I guess I could turn it the other way. And then I'm going to do the same thing to this bottom. Several slow passes. You don't want to try to cut through the whole thing at one time. Okay. So if you just had the uh, if you just had the large pad, which I make a lot of notebooks. Let me show you. This is a traveler's notebook I'm currently using right now. Um, I make a lot, but there's always a little bit of leftover of this paper. I don't throw any of it away. Let me show you. I make myself a little scratch pad out of all of those leftover pieces that I cut off, and I just keep adding them on to my little pad here. So what I do is I, it's a twice this, you know, width, so then I fold it in half, rip it in half, and then glue it to this pad. Um, this is all that paper, and that's how much I love this paper. I refuse to throw any of it away. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay, so let's check to see if this fits. I'm sure it does. Okay, yep, it does, it does, it does. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up. Open it up. And straighten everything out. Well, as best I can. And I'm going to clip it. I didn't get any clips out. Hold on, let me grab some clips. Oh, I have some right here. Ouch. I have a um, salt candle burning here next to me. And I just put my arm over top of it. Not very smart. Alright, so I'm just going to clip it on either side here. And then I'm just going to get a regular O stapler out. Looks like I might have got off a little bit there. And this one, it will fit. So I'm just going to go and put two staples in. If it'll go through all that. It did. Two staples in right there at that spine. Try to line it up perfectly. Ooh, that one almost didn't go through. Oh, I feel like I might have messed something up. Oh, I did. I shifted my paper. Okay. We're going to fix it. <clears throat> yeah, I shifted my paper. Okay, so let me get my craft mat back out. It's wrong door. And since there's a pocket on the back, I'm going to open that up so that I don't accidentally cut that pocket off. And believe it or not, it's actually a little bit more tricky to get these tiny little slivers off, especially if there was more than one. Okay, perfect. I am gonna go ahead and ink. <clears throat> I am gonna go ahead and ink the edges of the paper. That way it's not as stark. Start white. 
and it looks nice that way. All right, so then we've got this pocket back here, and I thought what I would do is I'm just going to somewhere I had, oh, here it is. This is just one of my uh, post-it notepads, and it's actually a three by four, and, and now that I think about it, I bet you it's close to the same size as this. So these scrap papers, you can make a little notepad to slide in here, because what I thought I would do is since it's got a back, this is like, a, I'm almost done with this post-it notepad. Um, I would just slide that in so now I've got some extra post-it notes here in case I need them. So because of that, I am just going to take my art glitter glue and run a bead on the pocket, top and bottom here, and that's it. I'm not going to get fancy. I'm not going to worry about having access to the full pocket. So when uh, if I don't want my post-it notes in there, I could make myself a little pad um, of the exact same paper that I can, you know, tear off pieces and stuff. So that is so cute. Okay, so then this is going to go here. So I'm not going to do any more embellishing to it right now. We might come back like and do uh, more specifics to everything um, if I don't like, for example, that. I mean, it looks like it probably needs something, but I don't know what yet. So we're going to, we're just going to hang tight. So do you guys like it? You think it's cool? Okay, so in the next video, we're going to make the insert for this pocket here, this pocket here, and this pocket here. So that's all I've got for you guys. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Be sure to check out the show more section under the video. There's a lot of useful information there. And here is a button to subscribe to my channel if you have not already. And then be sure to hit that bell icon so you always get notified when I upload a video. And then here is a link to my shop um, where all the templates are available. And then there should be some videos up here that you might enjoy watching. So I will see you guys next time. Bye.